Hello, I'm Peter Switzer. Welcome to the program which puts you in touch with the best and the brightest minds in the business. And we've got a cracker show for you tonight. And we have one of the best and brightest in Canberra standing by to talk to us, Mr. Joe Hockey, Opposition Treasury Spokesman. How are you, mate? I'm great, Peter. Happy New Year and to all of your audience. And we've been looking forward to having you on this show for a long time, Joe. Tell me this, your old mate Kevin Rudd's back on Sunrise. Do you think he's going to have a run for the, uh, the leadership before the year's out? Well, I helped to make him Prime Minister once, so I won't do it again. So it might be a different, <laughs> slightly different program this time, Peter. Yeah, well, certainly the new and improved Joe Hockey certainly should be able to score plenty of points off Rudd and, uh, and uh, keep the, uh, the coalition in the, the box seat. Do you think that there could be a challenge to Julia Gillard before the next election? Oh, look, Peter, I, I just think the government's just totally dysfunctional. It is complete chaos at the moment. And it's so disappointing for Australia. I mean, you saw the retail sales figures that came out today. They were disappointing. Uh, there's just a general malaise in the Australian economy. And there's absolutely nothing the government is doing to try and lift Australia from the malaise. In fact, they're making it far worse with unpredictable and chaotic government. And we're offering a very clear plan, a plan for stability and certainty and predictability, get the mature people back in charge. OK, so tell us why the government hasn't created the budget surplus and then tell us how you're going to do it. Well, the first thing is, Peter, they, you know, they just had all these unqualified, heroic statements about we'll get back to surplus. The interesting thing is, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to lay the blame everywhere and the Prime Minister's been saying Australians aren't paying enough tax at the moment. On, in the 2009 budget, uh, on budget night, uh, the government said... In 2012-13, they would raise around $321 billion of tax revenue. It's turned out that it's around $339 billion of tax revenue. So there's $18 billion of tax revenue this year on the government's own numbers uh, that they're expecting more than they did back at the worst of the GFC. And yet they're still blaming the GFC for their woes. The government says they haven't got the revenue. The problem is their expenditure. They're spending too much money and their spending and borrowing uh, is having a catastrophic impact. Now, from our perspective, we've already said number one in our four-point plan is to live within your means. And how do you do that? Well, the starting point is you don't hand out things like school kids bonuses by borrowing money, by borrowing money. And we're not going to proceed with a school kids bonus. Secondly, we've said the mining tax package as it stands detracts from the budget how long, how much, we don't know. But it's billions and billions of dollars because the mining tax isn't raising any money. We'll get rid of the expenditure side of that so you don't have to worry about raising the money and there'll be no black hole in the budget. They're the starting points. OK. All this talk at the moment about superannuation being um, attacked, um, people with a million dollars in their account likely to see, possibly going to see, uh, uh, taxation when they withdraw money. What are you guys going to do? Are you, got, got, are you going to actually think about why well, you're going to actually tax retirees when they pull money out of the superannuation? Look, it comes back to stability and certainty. I know, Peter, you've been involved in this area for many years and you're widely regarded as one of Australia's uh, leading experts in relation to superannuation. And I can say to you, you know and I know, enough is enough with the wild changes, with every government coming in and making further changes. When we made changes... We made it better. We gave people the opportunity to uh, save more, to put more into their super, to get more out of it. Uh, now the government's saying, look, there's a pot of money. We're going to increase superannuation contribution from 9 to 12 per cent, but there, we're also going to increase the taxes on it. Uh, that's what Labor's saying, in order to pay for all these other promises and waste. We're not going to... We have pledged. Tony Abbott has pledged emphatically. And I can say it emphatically, we are not going in government to deliver any unexpected negative changes to super in our first three years. Uh, and why do I say it in our first three years? Because I don't know if we're going to get another three years after that. But I say to you, we are not going to make these sort of unexpected, unpredictable, negative changes to superannuation. We're not. We need stability. But Joe, 
But does that mean you won't tax retirees when they take their money out of super? No, we won't. And, and we That's won't. A great, it's a great thing for a lot of people wanted you to say. Well, Let's I, go well to I'll tell you why, Peter. I'll tell you why. Because, you know, when people put money into super, they're locking it up. They're locking it up until yeah. uh, they hit the retirement age. You don't tax people when they take money out of their bank account. They pay tax along the way. Uh, they pay tax on their income when they put it into their bank account. So I don't think super conceptually should be any different. OK, what about the carbon tax? Will you guys take it away and will you need a double dissolution to make it happen? We will take it away. It'll be our first act of business. Uh, and we'll take it away for a whole lot of reasons. It's tax on manufacturing. It's tax on jobs. Uh, it gives Australia a, a massive um, competitive inhibitor uh, in global trade. We'll get rid of it. How will we get rid of it? Well, we'll introduce legislation the same way it came in. And uh, will the Labor Party support it? You bet they will. If they cop a thumping at the election, uh, they'll see the sense of the Australian people. They won't, won't want to go back to another poll quickly. They will, they will let it through. You watch them. You watch them. Joe, how are you going to battle the Campbell-Newman effect? That they'll say that when you guys get in, you're going to cut uh, spending, you're going to sack public servants. Um, how are you going to deal with that? Well, we're honest. We're up front and we're honest. The challenge for Campbell-Newman, and what will be the challenge for us, Peter, is that Labor's not telling the truth about the numbers before the election. We know that. We had, we had a great scene in Parliament today where Wayne Swan said, let's deal with the facts, and then he got the facts wrong according to his own budget papers. So, you know, that's what we're dealing with at the moment. They're making it up as they go along. We don't know what the state of the budget is. You don't know. The Australian people don't know. The government knows, but it won't tell anyone. And that's very, very frustrating. What we've said, for example, uh, is that we're not going to proceed with things like the school kids bonus. We're going to cut the waste. We're not going to increase the refugee program to 20000 adding uh, over a billion dollars to the cost of the budget. Uh, we're not going to go down the path of spending vast amounts of money on trying to stop boats because our policies will stop the boats as they have before. So we're going to get rid of the waste. That gives us some level of flexibility. We'll be as upfront and honest as we possibly can with the Australian people about what we've got to do to get the budget back in shape. But as Campbell Newman knows, when Labor goes, it's always debt and deficit they leave us with, and that's a hard road to hope. But you've said you'll create a surplus in every year, uh, in the, the first well, three yeah, years that, of uh, Parliament? That's, that's based on the numbers that have been published by the government today, where they claim they're going to deliver a surplus. Now, as you know, the government's backsliding from that. We don't know what numbers we inherit. As you know, Peter, if you take mm. over a small business uh, and you don't look at the books... You're in for a world of pain, you know. If they don't tell you the truth about the state of the books, when you take over that business, you're taking huge risks. Well, I'm not prepared to take risks. I want to, I want to give Australians stability and predictability and certainty. Joe, thanks for joining us on the program. Peter, any time, it's a pleasure with you. Thank you. Great stuff, mate. Thank you. Joe Hockey, the man who would be treasurer. Uh, after the break, we'll be uh, looking at the markets and how you should be investing in 2013. Oh, 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 oh,